Welcome back, everyone. Uh, let's take another look at a symmetric matrix and talk about its orthogonal diagonalization. You see a matrix A right here, uh, which is very easy to check that it is a symmetric matrix. Uh, one can show that the eigenvalues of this matrix are 7 and negative 2. Um, and when you calculate the eigenbases for these two eigenvalues, the 7 space Gets, an, gets a basis of 1, 0, 1, and negative 1 half, 1, 0. You get that from the RREF of A minus 7i. And then a basis for the, the negative 2 eigenspace. You get negative 1, negative 1 half, and 1. Now, if you're not in love with these fractions, of course, you can always kind of replace a vector with a, the non-zero scalar multiple. So you could, always, you could replace this first one with, say, if you times it by uh, 2, uh, you could get negative 1, 2, 0, if you prefer. And you could also replace this one over here. If you times that, scale that by two, you get negative one, I'm sorry, negative two, uh, negative one and two, like those. So you can make those substitutions if you don't prefer the fractions. I just listed the matrix that the RREFs of the A minus lambda I would give you here. And one should check that these vectors are in fact orthogonal with each other. If you take one, zero, one, and you dot it with negative two, negative one and two, Notice you end up with negative 2 plus 0 plus 2, which is 2. Uh, sorry, 0, excuse me. So that one's orthogonal. Likewise, if you take negative 1, 2, 0, and you dot it with negative 2, negative 1, 2, you end up with 2 minus 2, which equals 0. So vectors from different eigenspaces are going to be orthogonal with each other because the original matrix was, in fact, symmetric, right? But we don't have the situation where if you take the vectors from the, the seven space. If you take their dot product, you don't see zero in that situation. So we get one, zero, one, and you dot that with negative one, two, zero. You'll see this time you get negative one plus zero plus zero, which is negative one, which is not zero. So the basis for the seven eigenspace is not orthogonal, but we can apply uh, the graham smith process to make it orthogonal. And we're not going to apply the Graham-Smith process to the entire eigenbasis. We do have an eigenbasis in front of us. Uh, we're only going to do it just to the seven space. And so we're going to take as our first vector, uh, we'll just take the vector v1 to be 1, 0, 1. We don't have to change it. For the second vector, v2, remember we take the second vector, negative 1, 2, 0, and we subtract from it this dot product, we take the first vector, dot the second vector, uh, which we did that a moment ago, that was a negative one. And then we divide this by the length, well, the, the dot product of the first vector with itself, which is gonna give us a two. And then we times that by the first vector, one, zero, one. So just applying the usual Gram-Smith formula right here. Uh, if we continue to simplify this, uh, we will end up with negative one, two, zero, and then we're subtracting here. I guess we're actually adding one half, right? Uh, so you get one half, zero, and one half right there. So combining those together, you end up with uh, negative one plus one half, which would give us negative one half, two plus zero, and zero plus one half, like that. If you don't like the one half, you can factor it out again. And so you get negative one, four, and one right there. And so we can kind of scratch out that one half part and we can take this to be our second vector in the forthcoming orthogonal eigenbasis. We take one, zero, one right here. And then the other vector we had, we don't need to change it from the, uh, from the negative two eigenspace. What did we have before that negative two, negative one, one? Uh, you can't see it on the screen anymore, but we take negative, or we tell, take V3 to be that vector right there the negative 2, negative 1, and 2. And so these three vectors combine to make Captain Planet. I, I JK about that one. This is going to form for us an orthogonal eigenbasis. We still do have eigenvectors. You can check by multiplying these three matrices by the original matrix. Um, and, but it's also, the, the, the pairwise orthogonality should still be clear, right? We didn't change V1 and V3, those were the same. Um, if you take V3 with V2 right here, uh, your dot product turns out to be 2 minus 4 plus 2, that's a 0. Uh, so we still have that. 
Uh, but also, if you take v1 dot v2 right here, you end up with negative 1 plus 0 plus 1. That's a 0 right now. So we now have orthogonality between all of them. So if you want an orthogonal basis, you just do the Gram-Smith process to each individual eigenspace because different eigenspaces will always be already be in the orthogonal complements of each other. All right, but to find this orthogonal di diagonalization, we have to find an orthogonal matrix, which is the name is somewhat of a misnomer uh, to find A right here. We're looking for this P, D, P, T. P inverse, right, which we could just do as P, T. We're going to take our matrix, but the columns of our matrix is going to be an orthonormal basis. So we take these vectors and we're going to uh, normalize them. So the 1, uh, the one zero one, if we take its normal vector, that's going to be, the length of that vector gives us the square root of 2. So we're going to take as our first column, 1 over the square root of 2, 0, and then 1 over the square root of 2. Uh, for the second vector right here, uh, we have this negative 1, 4, 1. And so we want to normalize that. You get 1 squared plus 4 squared plus 1 squared. That gives you 18 all inside of a square root. The normalization will look like negative 1 over the square root of 18. You get 4 over the square root of 18. And then you're going to get 1 over the square root of 18. Please don't be have any desire to rationalize the denominators. That's not going to really give you much benefit in this situation. Um, and then negative 2, negative 1, 1, if you normalize that. Uh, the length of that vector, you get 4, 1, 4. That's a 9. So the square root of 9 is a 3. So the length of V3 is 3. So divide everything by 3. You get two thirds, negative two thirds, I mean negative one third, and then two thirds. So this is our vector P right there. The matrix D is going to be the diagonal matrix whose eigenvalues were what we get, had before. We had the eigenvalues 7, 7, and negative 2. Negative 7 was a repeated eigenvalue. Make sure you put the eigenvalues in the same order as you did the eigenvectors. It doesn't matter which order you use, as long as it's the same between them. And then to find the inverse of orth our orthogonal matrix, we only have to take the transpose, which is very simple, right? You, you might be looking at all those square roots. You're like, oh, no, the arithmetic is going to be horrible. But guess what? We don't have to do any arithmetic because we just have to transpose the matrix, right? It takes a little bit extra arithmetic dealing with these square roots and such. But then there's a huge trade-off at moments like this right here where I'm just writing the columns as now rows. And so now we have our orthogonal diagonalization. And you could verify by multiplying this thing out that this is equal to the original matrix. As a reminder, it was up here, the symmetric matrix. But you can verify that. And I would encourage you to do so just to verify this. But we found an orthogonal diagonalization. This is a diagonalization. We're seeing that the matrix A right here is, in fact, similar to a diagonal matrix. And in fact, the, this, this connecting matrix, P, is an orthogonal matrix. Its columns form an orthonormal, uh, orthonormal basis, an orthonormal eigenbasis for R3 here.